The 2013 Buffalo Bills overall were not that good, with this season being the first under rookie head coach Doug Marone. The offense was bad, but the defense wasn't so bad. And by not so bad, I mean they're on par with the Bills' defenses helping the Bills challenge for AFC titles. Under then-defensive coordinator Mike Pettin, the Bills' defense would become a top-five unit and a sack force. 41 sacks under Pettin in 2013, then 40 more under Jim Schwartz in 2014. This defense was so good in 2013 that it led to the aforementioned Pettin being hired by the Cleveland Browns as their head coach, something that didn't work out for the franchise or for him. Before I get too far ahead of myself, though, let's talk about these first of the two seasons where the Bills had one of the best defensive lines in franchise history. But let's introduce the Fantastic Four, starting out with... Defensive end Mario Williams, a.k.a. Super Mario. He was brought into Buffalo with the promise of large riches, signing a six-year deal worth $100 million with $49.5 mil guaranteed. It was the largest contract given to a defensive player at the time, which is strange to think about since the Bills just signed Vaughn Miller to a six-year $120 million deal. Most of the money was up front, but it was still a staggering deal with a large attempt by the Bills to put their name back on the map. But let's move back to 20. 12 when Penn was put to paper, as it was strange that the Bills were able to lure Mario away from the Houston Texans. Now this deal was absolute gold immediately for the Bills. In his first season with the Bills in 2012, he was able to get to the quarterback 10 and a half times, which blew all expectations out of the water. But he was still playing for, through some serious injuries, so the Bills weren't even seeing the best of him. Let's move on now to the 2013 season, in which Mario oversaw another coaching transition and management, this time from Chan Gailey to Doug Marone and company. This was the year that he and the other three parts of that legendary defensive line were finally brought together. Marcel Darius played college ball at the University of Alabama, where he was pretty good to say the least, albeit with some disciplinary problems. He only had 11 sacks in his three years with the Crimson Tide, but he showed enough potential at the defensive tackle position to make the Bills interested when draft time came. They were so interested, in fact, that the Bills selected Darius with the third overall pick in the 2011 NFL Draft. He was the highest defensive tackle taken by the Bills ever, and of course, the franchise and fans had high hopes for him. And he delivered early on, having five and a half sacks in 2011 despite playing with an injured hand. He continued that solid play into the next season, where he had the same number of sacks but had a larger impact and began to grow into a premier defensive lineman. He broke out in 2012 and figures around the NFL notice his excellent technique, especially after he moved into the interior of the defensive line. He was disrupted and forced other offenses to double-team him. And while his 2011 rookie season was good, his 2012 sophomore season was better, and it only continued to get better for him. But there were cracks in his off-field behavior. Familial issues, including death, began to plague Marcel, and while his off-field trouble didn't hurt him before, it definitely would later in his career. Kyle Williams was the other interior lineman on this four-man wrecking crew. The longtime stalwart for the Bills was brought in during the 2006 season after being a fifth-round pick. He was a relative unknown, but was able to compete and win one of the two nose tackle positions despite his underdog nature. He was a hard worker and true professional in his rookie season, taking a stranglehold of the spot that he would never let go of ever again in his long 13-year career in Buffalo. He started all 16 games in 2007, got a decent pay raise in 2008 when he signed a three-year deal and became a favorite of then-head coach Dick Jaron. This favorable trend continued despite the Bills firing Jaron and replacing him with Perry Fuel. In addition to overcoming this turmoil, he was also named as an alternate in the 2010 Pro Bowl. Once the Bills shifted defensive gears in 2010 to a 3-4 base, Kai retained his starting role playing as the primary nose tackle once again. Like always, Williams was able to be consistently good and he was even emerging as a team leader. He started all 16 games again in 2010, and this time he was named to the Pro Bowl and named for the top defensive player of the year by PFF. His individual success translated into a six-year extension from the Bills, and it was during the 2011 offseason that Williams first found a new partnership with Marcel Darius. The two were then able to have some good play together, and it was here that their chemistry began. Williams mentored Darius during this season, despite being sidelined for a significant chuck of the back end of the season. He returned from injury and rediscovered that the Bills once again changed coaches, this time switching from Dave Wanstead as 
DC. Wanstead changed the Bills back to a 4-3 base, and Williams played a season along Super Mario, Marceau Darius, and Mark Anderson. This wasn't the dominant defensive line that would come together in one year's time, but they were beginning to emerge as a formidable unit. But we're not quite there yet. We still got one more puzzle piece to talk about here. The fourth and final part of this great defensive line is Jerry Hughes, and he was brought to Buffalo via trade from the Indianapolis Colts in what now can be seen as highway robbery on the Bills' part. The Bills got Hughes in a one-for-one exchange for Kelvin Shepard, and like the other three in this group, Hughes hit the ground running with the Bills in 2013. It was strange because at the time of the trade, Hughes was another relative unknown, as he had already been in the league for three years with not-so-great results. He had only started one game in his first two seasons with the Colts, registering only a single sack during those two years, and it was not until his third where Hughes finally showed glimpses of what he could be. He was finally able to play in all 16 games, getting four sacks and 29 solo tackles along the way, and his potential was able to shine decently enough for the Bills to see it. That's why the Bills traded for him, and that's why he was kept around in Buffalo for so long, nine seasons actually, after his initial arrival. Hughes had become another stalwart for the Bills, and when considering all these moves, you'd wonder how so many Bills teams were so bad. Well, these were the few positives. Hughes, Williams, Williams, and Darius. They were few positives from eight years of personnel decisions, but fortunately, 2013 was the year all these four moves finally came together. 2013, the year the Bills moved on from Chan Gailey and on to former Syracuse football head coach Doug Marone. Mike Pettin, who I've already mentioned many times already, was brought in as the new defensive coordinator. The defense was being built from the front back, with our Fantastic Four all finally being together and ready to dominate opposing offensive lines. They were meant to be the staple of the defense, and that's what they would be for the next two seasons. Behind the two Williamses, Hughes and Darius, was rookie linebacker Kiko Alonso, who was brought in to have some heavy hit highlights, and a young promising cornerback in Stefan Gilmore. Hopes were somewhat high, but it was still understood amongst the Bills fan base that this was going to be another mediocre-laden season. And that's exactly what unfolded, but in a more painful style. The Bills were involved in plenty of close games at the beginning of the season, all of them low-scoring, of course. The defense kept opposing teams to under 24 points in 9 of their 16 games that season, winning 6 of those. The Bills went 6-3 and three in those games where the defense showed up, but when the defense couldn't pull off a miracle, the offense was nowhere to be found. The Bills would go on to finish the 2013 season with a disappointing 6-10 and 10 record, but it was clear that the Bills only had to rebuild their offense. That's because the defense, led by the dominant front four, were actually pretty good that season. Super Mario had 13 sacks, Darius had 7.5, Kyle Williams had 10.5 sacks, and Jerry Hughes had a great debut season, getting 10 sacks. Their collective success led to the fans and coaches calling these for the cold front, but it was still unfortunate that their sack success didn't lead to any more wins. But like I said before, that was on the offense, not knowing who their real QB was. It wasn't EJ Manuel, it wasn't Jeff Tool or Thad Lewis. Now, while this season saw the cold front get 41 sacks and be overplayed, the next season would see more consistent success from the four, and it eventually leaked to the rest of the team. 2014, the second season under Marone in the second go-round with the front four, and much like the prior season, each of the four led to the Bills having another defensively great season. Buffalo finished the season with much better results than last, going 9-7, and their first winning season since 2004, but it still wasn't enough to keep the teams making the playoffs. And once again, blame falls solely on the early season struggles from the offense, specifically E.J. Manuel. But this isn't about him or Kyle Orton's redemption arc. It's about the front four for the Bills, who as a whole were able to compile 40 sacks this season. 14 and a half came from Super Mario. 10 came from the quickly emerging defensive tackle, Marceau Darius. 5 and a half came from the interior lineman, Kyle Williams. And Jerry Hughes got 10 more sacks. They were the leaders on the then 4th best defense in the NFL. And the unit got altogether got 54 sacks, which was a fantastic step forward. And this was all done under a new DC, Jim Schwartz. So the success was clearly down to the individuals, not necessarily about the coach leading it all. Mario Williams, Kyle Williams, and Marceau Darius each made the Pro Bowl again, and while Jerry Hughes didn't get the prestigious honor, he still had a great case to make it. The defense was stout this season, 
but the Bills still wouldn't take a step forward until the franchise found their next QB. But by the time this would happen, the cold front would have thawed away completely. Mario Williams, a.k.a. Super Mario, faded from his peak seen during these two years with the Bills. He was one of many defensive players hurt by Rex Ryan's system change and by Doug Marone's last second departure, and he would only go on to have five sacks in the 2015 season. The entire defense suffered, and Mario would even go on to voice his displeasure with Rex and his defensive tactics. That's because instead of applying pressure on the defensive line, Rex would force Super Mario to drop back into coverage and play more of a roaming defensive lineman, which was something Mario did not sign up for. It was due to these differences that led to Mario Williams being released by Rex Ryan at the end of the 2015 season. He would only play one more season in the NFL with the Miami Dolphins, but was released after the 2016 season, and unfortunately for him, he would never play in the NFL again after that. After the 2014 season, Marcel Darius' off-field troubles came to a head, with the worst coming in the form of a one-game substance abuse suspension. He showed up to camp slightly overweight and with a litany of legal issues, including a reckless driving charge and being in possession of another controlled recreational drug. Now, this wasn't the only suspension that Darius would go through, with the second coming after a step-back 2015 season and a giant payday. He would be suspended a further four games at the beginning of the 2016 season in once this happened, his game took an even further step back under Rex Ryan. He would only have a combined five and a half sacks in his final two seasons in Buffalo, and these lackluster results, coupled with a giant salary from a six-year $95 million contract, led to Darius being traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars in exchange for just a fifth-round pick in October of 2017. He would play with the Jags under old coach Doug Marone until 2020 when he was released after two lackluster seasons, in which he had plenty of injuries and off-field troubles. Sound familiar? Well, not really. And much like Super Mario, Darius has not suited up in an NFL game since. Moving on to players who had a much more happy ending to their careers, starting with Kyle Williams. After his peak in 2013 and 14, Williams would slowly decline statistically, but his presence on the field would continue to be felt. He was the primary nose tackle under Rex Ryan during his two seasons as head coach for the Bills. However, part of his two-year stretch was interrupted for Kyle by a PCL injury late in 2015. Once he came back from this injury, he found himself having to battle for his starting position again, but... Like the many other times in his career, Kyle came out on top. He would once again have a stellar 2016 season, proving that Father Time cannot get his cold hands on Kyle. Due to the stellar 2016 season, where he had five sacks in just 15 games as a run stopper, he was deservedly named to his fifth Pro Bowl. Up to this point in his career, Kyle had plenty of individual success, but had never been on a Bills team that reached the postseason. He was a true warrior for the Bills, loyal and always a leader, but he clearly had been snakebitten during his playing career. But as we now know, this would all change in the 2017 season, where the Bills' group of misfits somehow made the playoffs with a 9-7 and record. This effort was spearheaded by a valiant effort from Kyle Williams, who flourished once again under the new regime of Sean McDermott. And since nobody knew if he was going to retire after this season, Kyle was allowed to become a fullback and run in the ball for a touchdown in the regular season finale against the Miami Dolphins, the first of his career on the offensive side of the ball. Things would get better for Kyle after that game as he watched on with Jerry Hughes and the rest of his teammates as the Cincinnati Bengals miraculously beat the Ravens in a, on a fantastic 50-yard touchdown pass from Andy Dalton to Tyler Boyd. His reaction to this was heartwarming and became a trendy video around Buffalo, and it was nice seeing the longest-tenured Bill finally reach the playoffs. After the wildcard loss to the Bills, Kyle would resign and shepherd the Bills through a difficult 2018 season, which after this he finally retired. And finally, Jerry Hughes would also go on to have a long career with the Bills after his great 2013 and 14 seasons. He signed an extension early in 2015 to the tune of five years worth $45 million, which carried him through the 2019 season. Hughes played through the 2015 season with the wrist injury and, worse than that, Rex moved Hughes from his preferred position as an edge rusher to more of an outside linebacker. And as a result, Jerry's stats came back down to earth, never again reaching the double-digit return scene in his glory year. 
years. He would only have 11 sacks combined in the Rex Ryan era, and unfortunately for him, these sack numbers would not improve with a coaching change. But Hughes was still a consistent force on the defensive line once of he was, of course, moved back to being an edge rusher. In his first season under Sean McDermott, he once again only had five sacks, but he was able to have plenty of solo tackles and was a high pressurer. As the Bills began to rise from basement dwellers to playoff contenders, Hughes was very much on the forefront of that. He became another veteran leader of an emerging and stellar 2019 Bills defense and helped them go from a 6-10 and record to a 10-6 and record that very next season. In his second postseason game with the Bills, Hughes was great, sacking Deshaun Watson three times and fell just short in that game, but it was clear that Jerry still had juice in his tank. And it was because of this that the Bills gave Hughes another two-year extension, and it was during his 2020 season that came his best play ever with the Bills. After a strip sack by Tredavious White on Drew Locke, Hughes picked up the ball, danced around a couple of Denver Broncos, and was able to shuffle his way into the end zone on a 20-yard scoop and score. He used the momentum from this play and took it into the postseason, where in three games he had three sacks and once again played excellently under the primetime lights. But after this season, Hughes would clearly lose a step in the 2021 season where he had only two sacks but plenty of pressures. And after this season, Hughes was finally let go by the Bills and he would go down though in Bills lore, having the fourth most sacks in franchise history. And it seems to be only a matter of time until Hughes goes up on the wall of fame or gets some sort of congratulatory and dedication for all he did here with the Buffalo Bills. The Bills have had plenty of great defensive lines in franchise history, but this two-year stretch featuring Mario Williams, Marcel Darius, Kyle Williams, and Jerry Hughes was one of the most underrated. No matter what happens to each of these four guys after their time with the Bills, it doesn't take anything off what this group was able to do together. Leading the Bills to having a top five defense in the middle of the hopeless drought, having a combined 80 sacks in these two years and more makes the cold front the most underrated defensive line in Bills history.